There are many different ways to play the impressive Game Boy Advance. We have the OG model that began it and the micro model that ended it. But we also have the SP. It is such a fabulous device that in time had so many different form factors and different ways to play. Well, today, guys, we're going to take a look at the Pow Kitty. Pow Kitty uh, just released their V10, which is promising a 3-2 screen with a aspect ratio that is supposed to be really good for double the resolution. Let's see. Wow, Jamie, did you see that? No, wait, that's not me. I'm not Joe Rogan. Hey, deadheads, welcome back to the channel. Or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. Today, we're going to take a look at and do our unboxing and first look video of this guy, the Pow Kitty. Pow Kitty V10. This little Game Boy Advance capable machine is giving us a promise of a true 3 2 screen at double the resolution of the original Game Boy Advance. But does it hold up to the hype? I don't know. You're going to have to stay tuned and see. But remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Help us keep growing the channel. We love our little community here of Deadheads. We're not trying to be a massive site. I want us to be the best kept secret in handheld gaming, retro handheld gaming video content on YouTube. Anyways, let's hop into that first look and let's start this unboxing. All right, we have today's latest uh, brick of coat. I mean, what? Oh, no, wait. Sorry, guys. We have the Pal Kitty V10 here. So let's get this guy opened up and let's check it out for our unboxing and see, does it live up to any of the promise of super cheap 3-2 Game Boy Advance goodness at 2X? All right, let's start. Voila. Okay, here it is. The just released model V10 in our um, Pow Kitty box. Now this is a dirt cheap device. I picked this up on the official Pow Kitty store for $35 shipped with a coupon. That coupon was only good for the first few days, but I'll see if I can find you guys a sale on this. But anyways, for around $40, you should be able to pick this thing up. Um, so let's take a look at this box. So you can imagine the box is not fancy. Doesn't look like that RGB 20 SX box. It was nice and that's okay. I'd rather them save money on a box and get this thing out at a very cheap price. Um, so we do have our colorways here, the khaki, gray, the black, which I went for purple, white and, and other. So interesting. I put other here because it means probably there are going to be some more colors coming. I think this has probably been selling at a very good rate for them so hopefully we will see a lot of support for this and we'll see some more colors that are shipped out here soon um, so nothing real fancy here on the box that's okay very basic box we'll take it we just want a good product let's see what's inside we have a card here so our v10 this is a very compact um, device uh, nothing not much here on the the card quick combination of functions I do believe this has ArcOS. I don't know. We'll see in a second. I don't remember. It may have Jellos or uh, Rocknix. Um, let's see here. Here's the unit. Feels looks like a big old chunky square right off the bat. And we do have our USB uh, A to C. I, I don't know at some point when these really cheap ones will spend the extra nickel, dime, quarter, whatever to start shipping these things with fast charging USB-C to C. I'd like to see that. Uh, I've seen reports of Ambernick and the SP catching fire. Um, part of this has to do with that. Nothing there. Um, this thing. Oh man, in, in, in person, I, I can't tell you. I didn't expect it to be uh, square like this. I mean, it didn't really look that way online to me, but Immediately, it is it is very interesting how this feels in my hand. Uh, very immediately, let's zoom in here just a little bit, take a look at this, and so we do have our plus and minus here, which is going to be for volume. I'm assuming. I guess we'll have to figure that out in a minute. I went for this colorway because I like the purple buttons. A lot of people didn't like this colorway, but I really think it's nice um, with the gray and purple and the black. 
let's examine the side here so there's nothing on the side here i'm surprised there's not a slot for sd card it must be down here so it looks like there's a single sd card oh my that's kind of disappointing but i know they're going to hit a really low budget here it looks like we do have a headphone jack um, unless there's a slot on the top um, we do get two USB, so we probably OTG. Let's see if they're labeled over here. Uh, very hard to see, but yes, OTG and your DC port. And then you have your reset and your power button here. And on the back, you do have a battery door. So that is nice that we can remove the battery. The battery is 3000 milliamp hour, so that's good. This thing should rock along uh, running on this uh, CPU. Uh, I do believe it's the 3326, but I'll verify that. Um, and uh, really nice, uh, if I can get this door back in, really nice that you have a removable battery. This is going to mimic the original um, Game Boy that, that came with the removable battery. So kind of like that model V10 Pal Kitty, very minimalist. Looks like there's uh two screws maybe more up there so let's take a look and let's start uh seeing how this hardware goes and this d-pad d-pad feels feels pretty good um uh, not bad at all i'm gonna say it feels very similar to the 20sx so let me feel them yeah i'm gonna say this is the same d-pad feels very much like the same d-pad the, the 20sx feels just a little bit uh more spongy is how i'd say it this feels a little more stiff but this is brand new and i've used this quite a bit so that may be what's playing in here but it looks like they're using very similar components the buttons and everything look to be pretty much the same uh for that so voila um so yeah uh again for what this is kind of being aimed for um if you're mostly going to use this as a game boy machine um or you know 16 bit and under this this is very very adequate um although this would probably do some playstation one uh not expecting it to do much above that if it does it's going to be bonus content but there's no analog so pretty much that's what this is going for the back sticks which you can use mostly as hotkeys as well um, or for whatever limited you might need actual four sticks feel pretty good they're very loud so you can hear that they're very loud let's do a shake test so not much on the rattle i don't hear much it's not rattling around a lot so um, that's not bad and yes so uh the only only comment here is the single sd card slot if this is linux i personally i like the dual slots just because it's easier to keep your roms and switch custom firmwares but whatever and it's also easier to transfer uh between windows but um so we just got the one uh card here i think i got the 64 gig and let's see what kind of card they're using i'm sure it's a very terrible card and it's a a siapi uh c yappy c c p y so um i know they're trying to kick down on costs i really love that ambernick has moved over to clinoxia um cards so maybe we can get some better cards going and that's i don't know how that is so let's boot this guy up and see what it looks like turning it on it is arc os so it is running arc os uh oh there's a a light here it's interesting location for the light and it looks like it's uh, using a pretty old version of ArcOS. So I'm going to get this guy updated as soon as I can. But here's the very familiar front end. It did, it did load at 100% on uh, the battery. Um, and we do have our... We actually have some... Is there some 3DO in there? Oh, there's actually a 3DO game in there. Um, but yeah, everything you would expect from PS1 down is going to be in here. Pretty much looking like what we would expect. There's our Game Boys, Game and Watch, Sega, Genesis, 30, some 32X, Neo Geo Pocket, Open Bore. There's the PlayStation. Not a lot of PlayStation games, but that's okay. Uh, mostly fighters, which makes sense. Uh, Pico 8. So we do got some Pico 8 on this, and with this this shape of this screen, it might might look good with the 32. So we'll have to see. And our options, as always. So. Yeah, I'm going to get this guy kind of uh, 
updated um, now it does not have wi-fi however since it doesn't have wi-fi i do have a wi-fi dongle that i do use a usb-c so since it has that second port that uh otg port we can use the dongle there and we can see if we can get her uh set up to um to do some uh wi-fi so i'm going to set that up i'm going to try to update this um, but first i want to show um, a little bit of gameplay uh, just how it how it came so let's take this out of here and we're going to go straight into some Game Boy Advance and just show you guys what it would look like without setting up. If you're new to this hobby, perhaps you got excited, you had a Game Boy Advance, you didn't really know about these things, um, and you want to buy this and you don't have any experience with RetroArch or anything. So I'm just going to uh, play this or just show you guys how this plays just right out of the box. Looks like it's scraped nice. That's uh, one good thing. So even though uh, we're at this extremely low price point, we're getting like a we're getting a really good amount of ROMs that are not um this thing's loud wow that's kind of didn't expect that let's see if this is the volume like I thought so I don't see the volume going down so I may have to figure this out because that's not acting as the volume and I didn't, I don't think there was a volume switch, so I'm pretty sure that is meant to be. So, let's just see how this looks, just start, starting right off. We play some, it's one of my favorite shooters, Alien Hominid. And yeah, uh, the, the screen looks good. Um, you can see some of the bezel here. So it does have some bezel. But yeah, this, this looks good. Um, and of course, at this small size, even though it has sticks, I think that you probably could get this thing in your pocket probably fairly easily. Um, I wouldn't exactly call this super pocketable, but you know, pocketable enough that you can shove it down there. Um, it's, it's unfortunate it's not a little bit um thinner than it is but, but yeah i'm gonna say that uh i'm gonna say that this is uh from the way it, it loads the way it launches if you have never purchased one of these handhelds before one of these open source chinese uh based handhelds this is why you would go with something like pal kitty there's a ton of stuff on amazon claiming to be you know 300 retro games and, and classic games and teach your kid but they all if you see anything that says 501 or something like that it's usually just not very good so this is curated in a very better way than that can be and let's see if i can yeah there we go so i can get into retro arc this is retro arc this is where you're going to set up a lot of it i wanted to see here um, if they have this on 3.2 with integer scaling, but let, let's go in here and let's see. I'm really kind of interested to see what we have. Uh, core provided. So, the core provided, it might be, um, but it's not integer scaled. I'm going to put it in uh, 3.2. So, there we go. It's 480 by 320. So, um, or you can go in and you can actually go into the regular, as you see me changing and cycling through here. There's, there's our three, two. So that's going to be, um, and if you want to overscale it, it didn't change it. So, um, that's going to be that I'm going to go in here. Just guys, if you want to see my settings, show y'all what I've been using on, um, on uh, game boy. Cause I've been playing a lot of game boy advance lately. Uh, I'll put a video filter on here. I like to use scale to X. We're going to go save this in the configuration. So now we're in the, the 3, 2. I'm going to save this. So everything should come in a 3, 2. And let's go back to... Resume it. And yeah, man, that looks gorgeous. Boy, that looks good. So... If you can get this thing at $35, uh, 
um, with this aspect ratio, if you really want to do Game Boy Advance, this is going to be um, a better picture, a better look um, to upscale the Game Boy Advance to this 480 by 320. I'm not an expert in pixels. There was some concern about whether this was using half pixels or not. Um, but this 640 by 480 2x upscale that is rendering on this 3-2 screen is uh, looks just it looks beautiful, man. This is exactly what I hoped it would be. Um, it seems to be playing fine. It's not lagging or anything like that. It's curated well, and uh, it is doing image scaling and filling the bezel with a little bit of on the side there, which you could put an overlay. All right, let's try some uh, some non Game Boy here. We're gonna try some 16-bit Genesis here. We're gonna do some Street Fighter to see how this D-pad does. Um, I expect it to do like the other Pal Kitties have done, pretty much. And we're still so you can see it's not uh, rendering right, not fitting because we still have it auto into the three-two aspect ratio. If I go here, uh, let's go to settings, video, scaling, and we're going to take that over scale off and get this out of 3.2 because Genesis was not uh, originally rendered in that, that. So we're going to go and let it do, I believe it was. There we go. An 8.7. So yeah, 8.7 is the, the rendering, but we want to turn, turn the uh, integer scale off. So we're going to go into the 8.7 for this rendering on a 3.2 screen. And we'll do an override. So Genesis Save core override. And we're going to be some E Honda here. Now you could put bezels around here. You know, you could uh, do some shading and so it seems to be running okay here. Feels a little slow. I don't know. And this is again just Genesis, so I don't remember what. Although I really destroyed him, that, that wasn't bad. But yeah, the D-pad feels. It's got the pivot. I don't feel any difference than I'm used to with any of these Pal Kitty machines. So I'm gonna say that it's pretty much what you would believe it to be here. All right. So as we try out a little PlayStation here, since this is going to be the most demanding system, it is a Rock Chip 3326. So um, you could, you know, theoretically get some Nintendo DS running on this. Maybe some Dreamcast. There's no sticks here. So really, I wouldn't even try to do that. I'd stick just a PS1 and underneath. Um, but you can see this D-pad is pretty good. Um, it's gonna. It's what I thought. It's the typical D-pad that we're used to seeing from uh, Pal Kitty. And as I use it, it's loosened up, and I can get my Hadoukens off pretty, pretty straightforward as we play some Street Fighter Alpha here on the PlayStation. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. Um, I got this uh, running here at the. Uh, we'll show you the settings here. We do have this um, scaled at the 3.2. Um, so even though PlayStation's not 3.2, I do have it scaled at 3.2 and it looks it looks fine. Uh, it doesn't look really bad. Um, not to my eyes, but leave me a comment if you think that, you know, it could look better or something. But I think for PlayStation, this is running fine. We know the CPU, the 3326, can have a lot of custom firmware and a lot of support. And uh, yeah, on this three and a half inch screen, we're getting a really good look. So Deadheads, what do you think? Um, is this little guy at the price point uh, very attractive? 
Um, I'm going to say at this point, we're going to do our full review uh, in the future and we're going to give it some more testing um, when we do our full review in about a month or so. And we certainly want to test it against something like the KT R1 Pocket that has a 3.2 high res screen so that we can kind of just see if this is um, going to be a, a much cheaper nearly you know as good alternative unless you want the just very best in Game Boy Advance. All right guys this has been a first look and unboxing at the POW Kitty V10. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave us some comments. Um, let's get the commentary going and we'll see you next time guys. Dead Fred out.